position ourselves to hear a word from you. We need a word from you. We need to hear from you. Speak now, for thy servants are listening. I thank you for those that are on in the sanctuary. I thank you for those that are watching virtually. We pray your spirit will resonate with our spirit tonight. Penetrate through the electronic device and move in this house. God, you are awesome God. You are great God. You are mighty God. And we owe you worship. We owe you praise. We owe you thanksgiving. And Lord, we want to know more about you. We want to get close to you. So speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grateful to have our preachers with us, our officers and deacons, and to you, our sisters and brothers, this amazing ministry of music and this media ministry. We thank you so much for your prayers, your participation, and your presence. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, and respect for the Word of God. We're going to continue our series, and I want to apologize to those who are watching virtually. I know we promised questions and answers, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't have enough questions, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that uh, before we leave tonight, because I'm pretty sure y'all had questions, y'all just didn't take time to email or to drop them off, amen? I know you got questions. I know you got just, it's enough in this room with questions. I have my own personal questions, so I know you got, got questions. And I believe church should be a place that we learn, y'all. It's not a place that we just shouldn't only be a place that we shout and celebrate God, but it should be a place that we learn about God. It may be the reason we behave and act the way we act, is because we act out of our ignorance and we do not understand what God requires and what he is saying in his word. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. I'll say a little bit more about that before we leave tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse 13. We'll read verses 13 through 16 responsibly. These all died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have an opportunity to have returned together. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I want to take text with the subject living by faith. Living by faith faith. What does it mean to live by faith? Since y'all didn't bring your questions and it appears y'all know everything, y'all should be able to answer this question. What does it mean to live by faith? Or what is faith? Somebody tell me that in your own definition since you all didn't have any questions. I got questions. I got questions for y'all tonight. And this is a chance where you can say something if you want to say something since most of y'all want to finish my sentence anyway when I preach. This is your chance to speak out. This is your chance to say something. What is faith? Believing in something you don't see. I like that. Anybody want to add to what Ms. Angela said, believing in something that you don't see. What is faith? Anybody? Come on. Y'all didn't have questions. Y'all got answers then. Trust in God. Trust in God. Can anybody, anybody else? Obey. Trusting. 
All right, well, let me give you mine. That's pretty good. All of you gave, gave good answers. Let me give you one of my definitions of faith. The conviction of an unproven and unseen truth. Having the conviction of an unproven and unseen truth. Faith is radical, ladies and gentlemen. Faith is courageous. Faith is sometimes, in the eyes of others, crazy. Life comes down to this one thing, y'all. Will you trust God? Will you trust God? Faith is not a feeling. It's not how you feel. You cannot base faith on how you are feeling. Because sometimes I don't feel like I got it. But I got it, y'all. Because it's not based upon feeling. Emotions. Emotions come and go. So faith is not a feeling. Tell you what faith also is not. Faith is also not fear. You cannot have faith and fear in the same house. Either you're going to have faith or you're going to have fear. It is said that there are 365 fear knots in the Bible. And the Lord want to give you a fear knot for every day. Because we are fearful of everything, y'all. We're fearful of COVID. We're fearful of, of our future. We're fearful for our children. We're fearful for our finances. We're fearful of our health. That's why some of us don't go to the doctor because we are afraid of what we might hear. We are scared of everything. And so you got to have a level of faith to conquer that fear. And then fear is not only a level of, of fear, or it shouldn't be fear, not feelings, but it then is also not always the facts because faith will supersede the facts. I'll say a little bit more about that in a minute. But faith is... And you can tweet this if you're going to tweet, if, you, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you put it down and put it down right. Faith is a lifestyle and not an event. Faith is a lifestyle and not an event. It's not something you do every now and then. Faith a lifestyle of faith is a faith that you flow in. It, it, it's, it's in our vernacular, it's how I roll. It, it's how I move. It's a lifestyle. Here, here's another quote. It's not a concept you visit, but it's a lifestyle that you possess. It, it's not only just a concept. But it is how we move, we operate, and how we live. For the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And if you're not living by faith, it might be because you're not righteous. Because that word just means righteous. The righteous live by faith. Faith. You may not be righteous enough. You may not be just enough. But those who live according to faith have a certain level in which they move and operate. And have a certain method of operation in which they operate. How are you living? Are you living by feelings? Or are you living by fear? Or are you living by facts? The facts don't always line up with faith. 
God will operate outside of the facts. I got two or three of y'all who understand and have seen God move beyond the facts. The fact that I'm sick, but God said I'm healed. The fact that I'm down, but God says I'm delivered. The fact that things are not working out, but the faith tells me that things will start moving in a better direction. God will move beyond what you can see, feel, and even touch. Faith goes beyond our feelings, our fear, and our facts. This series began in Hebrews chapter 11. Well, we see the heroes and sheroes of faith. They are made famous because of their faith. This is testimony time. They're giving test of testimony of how faith moves and operates. Verse 1 speaks of, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's not a definition of faith, but it is a description of faith. And it gives these eyewitnesses, these people who have lived by faith, to give their testimony of what faith can do and what faith looks like when faith is lived out. Y'all remember the series as we've gone through? Abel demonstrated faith by way of what? By way of worship. Enoch demonstrated faith by way of walking. Nor demonstrated faith by working. And Abraham and Sarah demonstrated faith by waiting. Now we have the patriarchs are demonstrating faith by wisdom. That they're showing their wisdom as they live by faith. We get the blueprints of living by faith through the patriarchs. They are telling us what a lifestyle of faith looks like. Here's the first thing about faith. Faith that is in vision. Faith that is in vision. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, these and all, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. They didn't receive it. They did not have it in hand, but they saw it are far off. They envision what they did not see physically, tangibly. This messed many of us up because we're not ready to celebrate unless it's in hand. But faith walkers and those who walk by faith, we act as if we already got it. Even when we don't have it. That's why we look like we rich when we broke. That's why we got joy even in the midst of sorrow. Because we can possess what we have not attained yet. Because we have vision for our future. And the Lord will show you some things that will blow your mind. And you can't tell everybody about what you see because folks will discourage you. Everybody can't walk by faith. Everybody's not living by faith. They do not see what you see. And I mentioned it last time that I spoke that that when you first went to college, you did not see how you were going to pay tuition. But somehow, one semester went by, two semesters went by, and before you knew it, you were graduating. You saw it 
by faith. You didn't know how, you didn't know what, and you didn't know when, but you knew who. And you knew God was able by faith if you trust in him. To live by faith is to envision. And I ask you, New Hope, what do you envision? What is your vision? Because the pastor is not the only one that receives visions. He gives vision to old men and young men, to old girls and, and young boys and old girl, young girls. He gives visions to all. And so when you have that vision, when you receive that vision, we obtain it by way of faith. We are able to see it afar off. That's what the patriots, they envisioned a land that they did not obtain, but they saw it afar off. Y'all stay with me here. I wish I had about three of y'all that was seeing what I see. I wish I had about three of y'all that understand that you don't have to have it in hand yet if you got faith in God. I'm about to praise God right here all by myself because I've seen some things. I've felt some things. I believe some things are on the way by faith. I understand I used to be nearsighted too. But I'm able to see much farther now with the lenses of faith. Because when you walk in faith, you're not just compressed with what you are confronted with. You're able to look beyond what you are facing and in and dealing with because you know that faith is beyond your circumstances. I see why. I see why many people can embrace this is because they are so caught up in their present predicament that they can't see beyond their situation. But I see beyond my situation. I see a ministry that's thriving. I see a ministry that's thriving. I see a ministry that will connect with its community. I see a ministry that will grow. That's what I see, y'all. That's what I believe by faith. That's what I envision. And sometimes my shout, it ain't what happened in the past. Because there are a lot of things God has done in the past. Matter of fact, I haven't given him his just due for what he's already done. I still owe him some praise on what he's already done. And sometimes I, I praise him off what he's doing right now because the Lord is blessing me right now. But every now and then by faith, I give a faith praise. I give a praise for what is coming and what is on the way by faith. Not only do we see envision of faith, but we see the embracing of faith. Still in verse 13, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having received them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them. Not only do I see it, I am embracing it. Faith must be cultivated, nourished, and protected. I can't let haters and naysayers hear my conviction. Speak of my faith around people who will damage my faith and what I believe. And so you must cultivate it. Watch the people you hang around. I, I probably need to say that 52 more times. Watch the people you hang around. Watch the people you talk to. You can tell if they're good people or not. 
one of my judgments, or one of the ways I, I base it on is how they make me feel after they leave. And there are some people, you be glad to see them when they leave. Come on, talk to me here. Everybody is not good company to keep. Everybody is not good people to hang around because they are dream killers. They are faith snatchers. They will destroy your dream. Ask Joseph. Joseph will tell you one only mistake Joseph made was talking too much. He told his brothers, mom and dad, about his dream. And his brothers started hating on him. From that day, they could not stand Joseph because Joseph had vision that was beyond their comprehension. And we live in a day and time as they are living in a day and time where they're dealing with a lot of hopelessness. And when you're surrounded with hopelessness, you've got to get your faith and hold on to your faith. I don't care what nobody say, what nobody think. Hold on to your faith. I'm holding on and I won't let go of my faith. You've got to embrace your faith. You've got to envision your faith. But then thirdly, you've got to express your faith. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 again. These all died in faith, not having received the promise. But having seen them afar, they were persuaded of them, embraced them, here it is, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You got to express your faith. Now, because we express faith, many times we are seen as delusional, that we are not grounded in reality. You've heard this. You heard this. Somebody say something, and they say, Don't claim it, don't claim it, don't claim it, don't claim it. Because sometimes faith gives the delusion that we are not connected and grounded in reality. Listen, I can accept the reality of life and what life throws at me. If the doctor says I got cancer, whether I want to claim it or not, I got it. And ultimately, ultimately, all of us going to be claimed by something. But even if it's cancer, I still have another name that's greater than cancer. So whether I want to claim it or not, whether I want to say it or not, matter of fact, say what it is, call it what it is, but know in your Faith and in your spirit, there is a God that's greater than cancer. There is a God greater than high blood pressure, diabetes, and you can call his name. There is a name that's given that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Big Mama had it right. I love to call on that name. That name is sweet I, I know. Well, the more I call it, the better I feel. Listen what they say. We are strangers and sojourners. We calling it what it is. We homeless, y'all. I am a stranger and a pilgrim traveling through this strange land. Call it what it is. Don't be afraid to call it what it is. Don't be afraid to express what it is. Because when you're living by faith, remember faith is greater than the facts. And faith will overrule the facts. Express it for what it is. Call it for who and what it is. 
our God is able. And through faith, he can turn any situation around. Never gets too dark for him. Never gets too hard for him. Man's extremity is God's opportunity. God is able to change every situation and circumstances around. So I can express my faith. I can confess what it is. But not only do we have an envision of faith, an embracing of faith, an expressing of faith, but here it is, an enduring of faith. Faith must endure. Please look at verse 14. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. One of the easiest things to do is to turn back, to quit, to throw in the towel. But here's something that keeps me grounded. This is something that keeps me going. I'll just testify and I'll just share this with you. The thing that keeps me going, the thing that keeps me pushing, is the idea of I don't believe he's brought me this far just to leave me. How you going to wait till you get 50 years old start tripping? 60 years old, 70 years old, and you starting tripping. You done live by faith all this time. David said, I've been young. Now I'm old. Never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging free. Your faith ought to speak for itself. You've seen some things. You felt some things. You have experienced some things. How you going to wait till you get 50 and 60 and then start doubting God? Faith must endure. And it wouldn't be faith if doubt wasn't in the neighborhood. It wouldn't be faith if fear wasn't in the neighborhood. It wouldn't be faith if the possibility of me not making it showing up. But faith has the power and the ability to overcome and to rise above and to endure struggles. If we're going to have faith, we've got to endure. Nobody said it was going to be easy. You're going to have some struggles. You're going to have some ups. You're going to have some heartaches. You're going to have some ups and some down. Well, I did the best I could tonight to, to share with us the blueprints of living by faith and what it looks like. Faith must be embraced. Faith must be expressed. Faith must be envisioned, faith must be embraced, expressed, and faith must endure. But then lastly, faith will cause, faith will cause exhortation. True faith will cause you to be exalted. It will cause exhaltation. Look at verse 16 and we're done, y'all. Verse 16 says, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly y'all have heard this statement mentioned many times you are so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good but on one side you got to be heavenly minded so you can be some earthly good but watch the transition here in the text they are seeking for a country. They are seeking for a land on earth. But now it has shifted. It has graduated from a earthly possession to a heavenly 
possession. Faith has a way of growing beyond the materials of this world. You see, you, you begin praying for mansions, Mercedes, and money. But then you start doing what Jesus says. Don't lay your treasures on this earth. Well, rust and moth and thieves and robbers do steal and, and moth and rust corrupt. But lay your treasures in heaven. Colossians 3 and 20 says that we should set our affections on things above. That when you start living by faith, the stuff in this life don't move you like it used to. I wish I had about three of you here. Stuff you thought you needed, stuff you thought you couldn't live without, now you don't even think about those things. You don't even think about getting a new suit. Somebody almost had to check you and, and put you in the, getting a new suit. Because those things don't, don't move you like it used to. Shoes and purse, they don't move you. I, I lost a few of you there, but they don't move you as much as it used to. Because the more you start living by faith, the more this stuff and this world don't turn you on. You start setting your affection on things above. You quit talking about your house down the street and start talking about your mansions in the heavens. Look what else it says. He says in verse 16, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Ain't no COVID in this country. Wherefore, God is not ashamed God is proud of them. God is pleased with them because they are exercising faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. You got to have faith to be in relationship with God. Not only is he proud of them, he is preparing. Look what he says. And God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. God is making preparation, and he is proud of their faith. Because they are exercising faith and demonstrating faith, he is proud to be called their God. If you want to make God happy, show him some faith. You miss out on the rewards of God when you do not demonstrate faith. Let me give you an example of faith. and I'm going to have to send Trey a love offering because I'm using him a lot here lately with this father and son relationship. But let me pick it up. I was teaching my nephew, which is Trey Cousin, how to swim. And I said to AJ, I said, AJ, jump, man, I got you. AJ says, no. Mm -mm, I'm not, I'm not going to jump. I said, AJ, I'm your uncle, man. I love you. I will hurt myself before I let something happen to you. I said, come on, jump in the water. I got you, man. AJ says, uh-uh. I said, AJ, really, man? You, you going to stand there and not jump when I'm telling you I got you? So I gave up on AJ. I, gave, I said, okay, AJ, go, go ahead. I said, Trey, come here. Trey, jump. Without any hesitation. Trey jumps. And I discovered then it was relational. 
because Trey had seen his father. He had relationship with his father. He knew his father could hold him. He knew his father could support him. So without any hesitation, he jumped. And lo and behold, he's swimming to this day. He enjoys the thrill of swimming. And to this day, A.J. do not know the joy of swimming. He missed out on the reward of swimming all because of fear. He allowed fear and he allowed not trusting in the relationship to keep him from exploring the beauty of diving in the water. Well, there are some things in life God has for you. And God is saying, just jump. Just trust me. You are going to miss out on the rewards of life not having faith. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. The thing God has for us. They said that scripture that says, and God shall wipe all tears from their eyes. They said some of those tears are going to be what we saw that we could have had. But we didn't get because we lacked the faith in trusting in God. And any time you do not demonstrate faith, it speaks against the integrity of God. You do know, you do know that our God can keep his word. You do know that whatever he says, it will come to pass. You do know you can stand on the word of God. Therefore, not only should you stand on faith, should you walk on faith, but you should live. By faith. There are some rewards with living by faith. You will see some things and experience some things that others will not experience because they are not living by faith. I'm done when I tell you this. I'm done for real when I tell you this. That when I look at my life, and I looked at the hurdles, the hills, and the valleys that I've come over. And if God had shown me what I know today, I never would have believed it, and I never would be where I am. But what faith does, faith is a lifestyle that each day I'm getting stronger and stronger. I'm getting better and better. I'm learning to live by faith. This ain't just an event, y'all. This ain't just a moment. This ain't just a concept. This is a lifestyle. This is what I do. This is how I roll. This is how I flow. I live by faith and you're not going to always be able to see what God is doing in your life. You're not going to always be able to see it. But I dare you I dare you to trust him. He don't always give us the blueprint of what he's doing but I dare you to just trust him and live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Keep on living by faith. Keep on trusting it. And your name will show up in the in the chronicles. Your name will be chronicled as one who lived by faith. And God want to show you some things. God want to take you some places. God want to do some things in your life but you won't experience them if you don't live by faith. And the just shall live by faith. Come on, put our hands together. 
Bless and praise our God. Thank you so, so very much. Urshas, Urshas are on the way. Let us prepare now to worship in giving. Let us now prepare to worship in giving.